We're back talking some Monday Night Football. We've got a doubleheader. That's right, two games tonight on the Monday Night Football slate. We've got the uh, Baltimore Ravens visiting the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and then we've got the Arizona Cardinals hosting the Los Angeles Chargers. If you're new to the channel and you haven't subscribed yet, hit the subscribe button now. My name is CJ Curry. On this channel, we're doing prize picks videos damn near every day, especially with the NBA season right around the corner. That starts tomorrow. So get subscribed, turn notifications on so that when I drop new content, you are alerted immediately. And then also smash the like button if you want to see me drop an NBA video later on today. All right, without further ado, if you're not playing on prize picks yet, you should be by now. But some of you aren't, and that's okay. It's still a great time for you to get started playing on prize picks. They're running a special deposit match right now for first-time depositors. When you play $5, they're going to give you $50. Doesn't matter if you win. Doesn't matter if you lose playing that $5. They're going to give you $50 bucks when you play your first five bucks on prize picks to take advantage of this opportunity. You want to go down to the description of today's video. You want to click that special prize picks link and use promo code CJ Curry to take advantage. Uh, another great reason for you to be playing on prize picks right now is that they are running an Anthony Edwards free square, meaning if Ant-Man has at least one point versus the Los Angeles Lakers tomorrow night, well then you have a winning square, a free pick, in other words. So definitely take advantage of that for you existing and new prize picks players. This offer is available to everyone under the sun. All right, so what do we have here? Well, I got a number of different plays for this first game, which is between the Ravens and the Bucks, as we mentioned before. That's going to be the earlier of the two games. Weather looks pretty good here. This one has a high point total of 50 implied points between these two teams, and it looks like it's going to stay pretty close and competitive. Um, I think the way that I want to attack this game is through the air, especially on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers side. I think they've got an advantage here against the Baltimore Ravens, who rank, uh, what, 31st, I think, in passing yards allowed. And uh, they've given up somewhere around 28 completions of 20 or more receiving yards. So let's pop over to the NFL category. This should come to no surprise to anyone. I'm liking some Chris Godwin tonight. Godwin over 23.5 for his longest reception, meaning he needs to haul in a pass of 24 yards or more. Now, news has been coming out all week long about Mike Evans and his hamstring. Apparently, he's dealing with some hamstring issues, so he may not be 100%. It may be a decoy Mike Evans type of night, so maybe Chris Godwin is the one who feasts. It's always kind of hard to decide Godwin or Evans, right? Both of these guys have five receiving touchdowns between the two of them. Both of them heavily involved in this Tampa Bay Buccaneers passing attack, but uh, I'm liking some Chris Godwin here. Now, I don't have any projections for longest reception or anything like that, but I do have some game logs here from Chris Godwin. This young man absolutely been balling this season. He's a stud, of course. He's gone over this 23.5 longest reception number in one, two, three, Four out of six games. So that's a 67% hit rate. Now, as I mentioned, if there's any one way to, to attack the uh, Baltimore Ravens, if they're vulnerable or weak anywhere, it's in their secondary. And so Chris Godwin should have an opportunity here to haul in a pass of 24 or more yards with all that yak yards after catch that he is known for. So this is the first pick that I'm liking here, all right? So let's uh, move on to the second one, which is going to be the kicker for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. That's right. I'm talking about Chase McLaughlin. Now, McLaughlin last week wasn't really necessarily needed because of all the touchdowns that Tampa Bay Buccaneers were able to put up, but Maybe that changes tonight, playing at home against a, a tough Tampa, a tough Tampa Bay, a tough Baltimore Ravens defense. Uh, so I'm liking the 1.5 field goal makes for Mr. McLaughlin. Now, when we take a look at what he's done this season, pretty good job here overall. 67% hit rate, just like his buddy Chris Godwin on that longest reception prop. 67% uh, hit rate or four out of six games he has gone over 1.5 field goal makes. Now he's going up against a Baltimore Ravens team that ranks 19th in field goals allowed. So I think they've allowed somewhere around 15 field goal makes this season to opposing teams and kickers. So again, this could be a situation where playing at home against a tough Ravens defense, a defense that typically will kind of like let you get yardage, let you get down the field, but might stiffen up when it comes to the red zone where we could get Chase McLaughlin, you know, kicking a couple of uh, field goals through the uprights for us tonight. So I'm going back to McLaughlin 
after uh, he missed against the New Orleans Saints with just one field goal make. Like I said, the Bucs put up so many touchdowns there. His field goal make services weren't necessarily needed, but uh, this could be a nice little bounce back spot where uh, McLaughlin goes over one and a half field goal makes. So if you like it, take it. If you don't, well, it's not going to hurt my feelings. You do what you want to do with your money. It's actually none of my business what you spend your money on. Let's move on to the next pick, though. We're going over to the Baltimore Ravens side. I'm looking at King Henry, Derrick Henry at five and a half receiving yards. Uh, yeah, he doesn't catch a lot of balls. That's mostly Justice Hill's role on this team. But Henry can scoop in one to two receptions when things are going his way. And if he does catch one ball, hopefully it's for six or more receiving yards against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers team that has gotten uh, gashed, we'll say, by opposing running backs through the air. If you take a look this season at the running back position and you go over to the targets, uh, the Tampa Bay Bucks rank third in targets to running backs, meaning they're giving up quite a few targets and in that case, receptions to opposing running backs. And so this could be a situation where Derrick Henry uh, and the Baltimore Ravens offense and offensive play callers dial up a, a couple of pass plays, screen plays for Derrick Henry. And, you know, he could potentially get that six or more yards, especially if things aren't going well on the ground for Derrick Henry, because the Buccaneers do have a pretty stout run defense. And so they could have Henry out there on a couple of little decoy plays where he's, uh, you know, going to get checked down to on a, on a running back screen or something like that. But as far as projections go, let's take a look at the projections here because that's what really caught my eye about this one more than anything else. Yes, the matchup is good, but the projections looked even better. So we're going to go over here to Fantasy Labs and we're going to punch in the Bucks and Ravens. Let's make sure we're including them. We'll go to receiving yards and we'll look up Derek Henry, who is projected for 8.4 receiving yards. So He's at five and a half. He would need six or more receiving yards to clear this number. So this projection model is brought to you by Fantasy Labs. It combines the projections of Sean Kerner and Chris Raybon, two of the sharpest guys in NFL in fantasy football and all that stuff. So uh, loving the projection that I'm seeing here on Derrick Henry. For a second projection, because every projection model is just a little bit different, let's go over to another really sharp NFL projection model. And this one is called The Blitz. It's by my guy, Derek Cardi. And uh, he's got Derrick Henry projected for 8.8 .8 receiving yards. So this is going to be one of those props where it's going to be boom or bust. Either he's going to have like zero receiving yards or a couple receiving yards, or he's going to have like 10 or more. And to illustrate that point even further, we're going to go over here to outlier.bet. If you want to check out outlier for yourself, there's a link down in the description of today's video. Use promo code CJ Curry, and you should get a seven day free all access pass. But taking a look here at Derrick Henry, you can see that out of the six games in which he's appeared, he's had a couple of games where he's put up bagels, donuts, goose eggs, zeros. In other words, one game here against Cincinnati a couple games ago where he had four receiving yards, but then he's got a couple of games like against Vegas, Dallas, and Buffalo where he's had 12, 23, and 10 receiving yards respectively. And you can see here over on the right-hand side under the matchups tab that the Tampa Bay Buccaneers rank 29th when it comes to receiving yards allowed. And then they rank 30th when it comes to receiving yards allowed against opposing running backs. So important information here that the inf that the uh, matchup is actually a good one for Derrick Henry. So there's an option for you from the Baltimore side. Here's another one that's kind of maybe flying under the radar just a little bit. One that uh, has a little sneaky narrative behind it as well. I'm talking about Nelson Aguilar of the Baltimore Ravens who's sitting out here at 2.5 receiving targets. Now, he is a Tampa native. This is only the second time, to my knowledge, that he has returned to Tampa since being drafted into the NFL. Now, the last time he did this was back in 2018, a long time ago when he was a Philadelphia Eagle. But you can probably uh, think that maybe Nelson Aguilar is talking to his teammates. Hey, I'm returning home for only the second time, the first time since 2018. Hey, can you get me involved? Hey, can we get Nelson Aguilar the football tonight? Hopefully they will. He's at 2.5 receiving targets. Now he's actually done a pretty good job this season of going over two and a half receiving targets. Just taking a look at the seven games or six games rather in which he has played. He's been targeted three or more times in four out of six games. And he's got a streak going here of three or more targets, three straight games in which he has cleared two and a half targets. So hopefully 
you know, him being back in the, the Bay, back in Tampa, back in front of, uh, you know, a lot of people from his alma mater's high school here, Berkeley Prep in Tampa. You know, hopefully he gets targeted at least three or more times and uh, looks to, you know, get ball, ball out or, or, or ball out in front of, uh, you know, his fans and his friends and his, you know, family and stuff. And so there you go. Nelson Aguilar over two and a half receiving targets. He's projected for about 2.7 over on the Blitz by Derek Cardi. Uh, last one. This is going to come from the second game of this doubleheader that we have tonight for Monday Night Football. This is the Los Angeles Chargers visiting the Arizona Cardinals. Now, this one's going to be a little bit controversial, but I'm liking what I'm seeing on these projection models, and uh, really, that's all that I care about. It's going to be J.K. Dobbins, but we're looking at taking the under or less at 99.5 rushing plus receiving yards against the Arizona Cardinals. Now, I know. I know Dobbins has had some pretty good games this season, and I know that the Arizona Cardinals are a friendly matchup for J.K. Dobbins, but I'm just riding with the projection models here. I don't make these projections. I just use them. If you disagree with them and you scared, go to church and don't take the prop, or you can reverse the prop if you want. If you think Dobbins is going to ball out against the Cardinals, take the over. Don't let me stop you from doing what you want to do, but... Here's why I'd like J.K. Dobbins for less than 99.5 rushing plus receiving yards. Because when you pop over to one of the best NFL projection models that are out there, you're going to see J.K. Dobbins is projected for about 13.2 receiving yards and about 71 rushing yards. Now, I ain't no mathematician, but that's about 84 combined rushing plus receiving yards, which puts him under the 99.5 by about 15 or so. Okay, so that's a pretty big differential, a pretty big gap for me, enough for me to take a shot on the under. But as I mentioned before, every projection model is just a little bit different from one model to the next. So let's slide back over here to the Blitz, pop in J.K. Dobbins' name over there, and take a look at both his receiving yards, which are set at 18.1, and his rushing yards, which are set at 67.37. Now, I said I ain't no mathematician, so let me bust out the calculator for you folks who... Uh, don't have a calculator handy. I'll add these up for you. 18.1 for the receiving yards, 67.37 for the rushing yards. Brings you to about 85 rushing plus receiving yards. And so again, that puts him under by about 14 to 15 rushing plus receiving yards. And so for me, I think it's an opportunity for us to take the under. Now I will say, going back to what I mentioned before, he has had some great games here. When we're taking a look at the under at 99.5, you can see Three out of the five games in which he's appeared, he has gone over. But there are two games where he's gone under, and that was against Pittsburgh and Kansas City. Now, I'm not saying that the Arizona Cardinals are up there in the uh, same echelon as the Pittsburgh Steelers defense, as the Kansas City Chiefs defense. I'm just saying I'm going with the projection models, which factor in a lot more game-level factors than yours truly could ever do manually. And so that's why we rely on projections. So... That one's a little bit more of a spicy pick. Dobbins under 99.5 rushing plus receiving yards. But you guys let me know down in the comments section below. What are you guys playing tonight? What do you think about the picks that I've highlighted in today's video? You liking them, loving them, hating them? I like to get your feedback. I like to pick your brain. I appreciate you guys being here. And again, run those likes up if you want me to drop an NBA video in a little while covering tomorrow's two-game NBA slate to get the association started off proper. Appreciate all the love and support. CJ Curry, out.